Bring us your baffling. Bring us your audacious. We want your sticky notes, sketchbooks, and scribbles. Let's pin them to the wall, kick them around. Kick them around, see what happens. Because we're in the how do I get this startup off the ground business. The taking your business, global business. We're in the problem solving business. 400,000 people. Ready to help you solve problems while they're still called opportunities. opportunities. From figuring it out to getting it done. We're here to help. Yeah, we're just, again, had a, um, reflecting back to last Saturday, just excited to, you know, again, excited about getting that win against Miami on the road. It was, uh, it was much more nerve-wracking than you would like, have liked it to be. Uh, and you don't ever want, you hate going through those things when you're up 34 to 7 on about the first series of the second half, and all of a sudden it's 34 28 or whatever, whatever, whatever it was uh, with minutes left in the game. Uh, after you go through that, and then, then you learn lessons from it. You, you, you get a whole bunch of teaching moments from that and things that you can't, you know, very, a lot of times you, you have breakdowns in the kicking game or give up a big play and you look at a loss and, and you say, or your big lead and you lose your, your focus, which I think we did a little bit, and you have to, you have to address a very difficult situation. But uh, thank goodness we made some mistakes, uh, let, got, kind of lost our focus and uh, were able to come back one last offensive drive, got within a field goal range, hit a 50-yarder, and that kind of capped it right there. And, uh, but it was a good win for us uh, at Miami. Uh, when you think back to the, the, the last time we had been at Miami two years before that, we were facing a 28-game FBS losing streak, which was the longest in football, uh, and, it, and it went over five years. And uh, uh, we were able to, to or four, you however many, six wins times five is 30. So you're in your fifth year. Uh, and we were able to beat that the previous time. But you carried those, those kids were carrying that. And this time to, to go down there and have your third straight win against Miami. I want to think it's the first time in history that Akron's had three straight over Miami. And um, uh, get another road win, because we've had a bunch of road wins since that streak. Um, and. Uh, in fact, uh, you, you might want to guess we're all, wish we were on the road <laughs> the rest of the season the way that we're four and one on, in our schedule. I think we're, we're uh, uh, four of our five wins are on the road. Um, but anyway, that being said, it was a, it was a good uh, – Jatavis Brown, we can't say enough about the performance he had out there uh, on Saturday. Connor Hunley, him having that kind of game in front of a lot of his home folks was awful, was awful good too. But it was a good win for us to get us five and five now. And uh, – um, uh, now we got a lot of play a very good Buffalo team. You know, a lot of times Buff people don't appreciate how good Buffalo has become because of the history. They've had they've been through a lot of adversity as a program too uh, over the last 15, 20 years. But when you think of it, they won I think eight games two years ago. They went to a bowl with eight wins. Last year, even though they had a coaching change, they had a six and five season. And and they beat us very very. They give us one of our toughest lot biggest losses last week last year. So we've got to uh, we're excited about this game. We're playing a, a, a very good Buffalo team that uh, um, uh, is in the exact same boat as we are. And, uh, um, and so we're excited about playing, but we've got a, we got a huge challenge on our hands. And uh, um, it's need to have a great week of preparation for this team. They've got a veteran quarterback, and uh, Joe Lac Lacata. Uh, he's a senior. He's a veteran. He's their all-time leading passer at Buffalo. And uh, we seem to be facing quarterbacks that uh, quite often this league you face quarterbacks that are, that are, are good at what they do. And uh, our defense will need to have a great game uh, um, on Saturday as well as our, all of us. So big week, big week of preparation, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. You know, you know George, when we, when we hit explosive plays, we win. I bet you'll find that in the games we don't look very uh, uh, offensive. We scored 12 or 6. We don't hit those. We miss them. And all of a sudden you get you, – you're, you're, uh, or you're not running for as much yardage per carry and you're looking at long yardage situations and you're, you don't have a lot of downs to waste. It kind of all goes together because we, we, we want to play as aggressively on offense as we did Saturday. Uh, 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 and I think you've got to run the ball effectively. You've got to hit your explosive plays, as we, uh, which would be – we hit four of them in the first half. We hit a fourth and six, we hit uh, Jerome Lane. 
We had a big play to Wolf, one of the catch, big catch to Wolf, a big catch to Imani, and uh, what was the other one? There was one other one. Uh, there was four, and then a big ca catch by Pratt. These were all 25, 30 yard catches, big plays, uh, and all of a sudden that opened things up. And, and if you miss three of those, then you're really you, 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 it, it affects the way you go. But 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 you're right. I mean, there was a mentality on the sideline. I mean, we can, we're going we, let's go take the game. We ain't, let's don't go sit back and see if if their their ops going to come back. We faked a punt. We thought we had a good a good call on. We barely missed it, and we only missed it because we missed a block. We had the, they had the look that we wanted. We said let's go for it, and uh, it might be the play that ices the game. Uh, and we went for it. We uh, had some fourth down plays. The fourth down call that we made, this let's go for it. So so. I probably were in a little more of a, a, a aggressive mode, I, and I think that at this point in time, the schedule when you're, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, it's easy to look back when you lose, you lose a couple of games, 14 to 12 and 14 to 6, and the other team's playing pretty dang good. Uh, you look back and say, "Gosh, if this had happened and that had happened," and so um, you uh, you you're, you want to go out there and uh, 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 be as aggressive as you can. Uh, you know, no, I don't think revenge is the word because they whipped. I think there's a, it, it got, it gets your attention. It gets you when you're thinking, well, we're riding, we're riding a pretty good, we're doing pretty good right now. We're going to go out there and just because we want this game real bad, it's going to go our way. Well, they want it real bad too, and all we got to do is flip that film on. And a lot of those same starters went out there and just whipped us uh, up and down the field last year. Defensively, they whipped us good. And, uh, um, um, and so I, I don't know. It's a I don't think it's a re revenge factor, uh, uh, but the, it is a factor where if you want to get your players' attention, just turn that game on and make sure they see uh, that this team uh, how they how we how we played against them last year, and uh, you know they have a little different style, but their talent level is very similar, and so um, um, it de it definitely is a a a source of. Uh, um, um, motivation for our team to go out there and and, and uh, to when you want to get your t your players attention and you want to get them to practice uh, with with some um, purpose you can call it revenge but I think more along the line is hey this is this team this is what they did last year what we did last year and 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 this is what you're going to face if you don't go out there and have a great prep preparation great week yeah, I mean I mean they had a good plan for us that that that, that day you just got to hope it didn't uh, get you beat because it's one of those you can solve during a week you can solve by just adjusting what you do and your alignment you know we also partially blocked one of theirs they partially blocked one of ours we partially blocked one of theirs but then they brought 10 and uh uh and got that we we you know what uh and what that does is guarantee the next two teams will probably do nothing but focus on blocking punts but you can change yours you can say okay we're going to make sure we don't protect the same way that we focus not so much on coverage as we do protection. You have to give up a little bit in coverage to get something more in protection and make sure that a player, if, and when I, I don't want to talk about which individual player or which thing, but if a player was the one guy wasn't quite doing his job, you can correct that, you know. But it, uh, uh, it's one of those that you want to have, uh, uh, you have the time to correct it, you need to correct it because the other team is going to watch that and they're going to want to emphasize that. And uh, we've blocked punts this year, you know, and uh, um, I've, I've said a lot more with all these different punt formations everybody's using. There seems like to me a lot more punt blocks than there were in the past. But we've got to correct that. But we do it. We, we, we have spent ample time on correcting that uh, and uh, uh, and look and putting a lot of emphasis this week on our kicking game. Well, you, you, you think about what we just talked about a second ago there about punt protection. So look at your options. It's four. It's it's fourth and three, or was it fourth and six, on the thirty yard line, or thirty two yard line. So you can go for it, and if you don't, you're going to be on the third. Don't make a fourth and six. You're going to be on the 42, 32 yard line. If you uh, punt, you're likely going to go in the end zone, uh, or worse than that, you've had a punt blocked. And I don't think the defense would want. I don't think Miami would have wanted anything more just to put eleven people on line of scrimmage and come after your punter. Because the quickest way to score is to block a punt and let the ball roll the other way. So as it got down to what is the best alternative for us, uh, uh, I thought field goal was was it. On the other hand, I, Robert's kind of funny. I have a lot of uh, comp, I know Robert. I have a lot of confidence in Robert. But 
it, it, he gonna if he's gonna miss one, he's usually gonna make the next one. And I wish he was it, he made them all, but I don't think of him as missing two in a row. You know, I, I, of course, I, every time I send him in, I expect him to make it. But if he misses one, and he missed a forty-two yard earlier. Uh, I just I believe, and I know every day in practice we end up with about a fifty-yard kick every day in practice. We finish up with a kick of about fifty yards. So we knew he had the leg, and he had a little bit of wind behind him. And uh, uh, but if he had not made it. I still don't know what else I would have done in that situation to any differently. You just have to prepare for them because we we cut we, we stop the run as well or better than by in the conference. We're the number one rush defense in the conference, giving up the only team in the conference giving up less than 100 yards a game in rushing. And so uh, 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 I would like to think our strength they're going up against our strength when it comes to the running game. Their senior veteran quarterback they throw for a, a good bit of yardage. And that scares you as much that he's a poised quarterback. Their tight ends are leading receiver. Uh, they run the ball, play action, throw the ball to their tight end a good bit. Uh, you got to be ready for the running and the passing game. And uh, um, when they when they uh, uh, um, when they get on a roll, they're hard to stop offensively. That is the base offense usually that Central Florida, Central Michigan ran. Central Michigan keeps their quarterback under center. Quite often has two backs in the backfield. Almost always has a tight end. They're they're a, they're, they're a team that shows you run formations and passes the ball mostly, uh, and so you get a good view. And we and our defense did have a good game plan against a very good quarterback uh, and a similar type. But 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 Buffalo is its own, and Buffalo is it's a different coaching staff than last year. They this I mean. Uh, uh, this yet yeah, he has won. He's known nothing but winning, you know, uh, and um, uh, so they 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 they'll have a good plan. We just you know Coach Amato runs our defense. He's been around a long time. He's seen a lot of formations, a lot of offenses. Our players are excited about playing. We just have to line up and do the best we can of trying to do as well as some other teams have done against their offense. You uh, yeah, know, I think that George, that's exactly right. He is raising his game. Uh, at the point in time that our season is at a point where we need him to raise his game, where he needs to be exactly what he is. He, it's almost as if he alone feels like he has got to do the things that win the game. He has got to put the pressure on the quarterback. He has got to make the tackle for loss. Uh, uh, he, uh, um, he's doing exactly what you would hope a guy like, uh, like Jatavis would do, uh, and that's make, uh, make big plays. And um, and he's doing that. So, you know, we expect him to have a great game uh, every week because that's the way he practices and that's the way he prepares. And uh, um, um, and you just hope it's you know it's it's part of enough um, as we need the guys like that, guys like him and Cody Grice and some of our seniors to uh, to come out there and shine. D D D Dylan Evans has been a factor all year for us. Doesn't have that flash that uh, Jatavis does, but he has been our leading tackler all year. And Dylan Evans is quite a, quite a presence out there as well. No, you don't know what makes. Some people have drive, some don't. Some people are, are, are motivated, uh, highly motivated, highly driven. Uh, he is one of them. He came here with that type of personality and that type of mentality. So, you know, you wish you had them all like that. And some are just more talented than others. He's more talented than most. Some people are more driven than others. He's more driven than most. Uh, and he's got all the intangibles. So, um, you know, um, uh, like I said, we, we, uh, uh, we, we, it's, it's too early to sit here and, 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 and write postseason accolades for, for Tavis, but, but you can't say enough about what he's done. With two to go, you can't say enough about what he's done so far. Well, well Tavis is a lot faster than Justin. J Tavis has J – Justin uh, March is a, did a great job for us, and we, we, we're proud of him. Uh, and he is everything he could. He's all. He always played at at full throttle. That's what makes those two very similar. They always played with a full motor, played full go. Jatavis just carries four four eight four five forty yard dash time, and that's something that uh, uh, very few linebackers have. He can run very very fast. Well, well. I mean, last year we lost four out of you know the year before we we won four out of the last five. Last year after Cody uh, Kyle Pole got hurt and we came back, we lost four out of the last five. We've already won two out of our last four games, so I don't think they're the kids. We know they, we know that we know our our players believe they win. We have a very good opponent now, you know, uh, uh, that believes they're going to win this game, that, that believe they can win this game. So we've got to we've got to go out there and play our best and, and and beat a very good football team. I, I don't think it's too. I, I don't think. Uh, um, 
I think last year, I think you are right. I think that at some point last year, we went through our quarterback problems and we dropped a game there. We began to worry about, oh my gosh, oh my God. You know, all we can do is, we, we, all we can do is go out there and play the best we can play. I've tried to tell my players, go have, play, go have fun, play as hard as you can play. You can't, you're, you're, you know, um, you're going to do what's going to, what's going to happen is going to happen. Uh, you go play as hard as you can play. Uh, you know, just like I mentioned when I got here about where we were going into Miami when, two years ago for these guys and where they are now when it going into Miami and leaving Miami, we're at two different places in the history of our program. Now we need to get to the next place. And the last thing I want is them to put an undue pressure thing, guy, you know, because they want that. They, they, nobody wants to go win this game more than those players. And I just, I, there's absolutely no reason to try to say, well, I hope you all understand this, if this one doesn't happen, then what's going to happen? So go play your best, and and so and they they have shown that they they they've played the last two games we played. Uh, you wish the last one hadn't been, but both of them had to be played right down to the the wire, right down to the last drive. You had to play it all the way to the very end, and uh, uh, and even the games we've lost, you know, have gone down to the final series and the final play. So it's been a, it's a it's a. I think the fact these kids, our our players, just matter. Matter of uh, going out, playing their best, and having having uh, having one more big play than the other team.